Nick, David, first okay. up. Well, I better explain why on earth um, I got interested in India. And uh, this is not a new thing, because almost 50 years ago, I, um, I, come in. Um, I initiated a special project at Stanford Business School on increasing food output in India, uh, looking at how, whether if one applied Chinese management methods, it would tackle the problem of India where half the food uh, was wasted. I might say 50 years later, it's still the case, but half the food goes uh, uh, to waste. And, um, but it was only 10 years ago, so my first slide, so I'm talking about smart urbanization uh, in southern India, and my first slide is really pointing out that one of the, the delights, it seems to me as a, a foreigner, is the, the, the market and, and the, um, the fact that a lot of food is produced in the South. And I'm basically focusing on Tamil Nadu. I'll explain a little bit more uh, in a moment. Um, but the reality is population growth, and that's happening on a worldwide scale. And I think these, if you could, can you, can you read that at the back? Uh, what's really interesting about this is that the middle class is expanding very rapidly, creating a market for cars and air conditioning and all sorts of manufactured products. But the people living in informal settlements, or what they might call slums, are expanding even more rapidly. Those are the forecasts over the next, uh, uh, up to 2050 for the, for the world. And uh, in India, the problems are in some ways are even more acute, because whereas internationally over the world half the population live in cities, in India only 30% of the population is currently urbanized. So people predict there will be a huge movement into the cities, uh, even greater, or as great as is happening. And you've got these four mega cities with 10 million, uh, Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata, and to some extent Chennai, which is 9 million in the agglomeration. Um, but 46 with over a million. I think you're going to say more about a little bit the numbers. Um, and uh, if you compare that with your, your past 35 cities, so there are already more big cities in India than there are in the whole of Europe. Now, the population in Tamil Nadu is around 80, 72 to 80 million. So it's as big as the whole United Kingdom plus. Um, and um, I've uh, only focused on that. Um, 10 years ago, I was taken out by the British Council and, and took part in a conference in Delhi and Goa. It was on Euro cities. I was appalled to see that all the rest of the world, in Europe, seemed to be taking a very great, great interest in India, and no one from Britain apart from myself um, and, the, and the colleague from UCL were there. Uh, so it seemed to me a bit silly that Britain didn't you know, get in, interested in what was happening in India. These are people were basically there because they could see the commercial prospects. It was sponsored by a big cement company. And India is growing at eight times faster than UK and a hundred times the scale. So however important it is to make better development in Britain, and the reality is that in terms of the impact on climate or whatever, it's a fraction of, of what's going to happen in India. And I got really concerned about cement or concrete and the impact of housing everyone in concrete houses on uh, burning uh, fossil fuels. There's Tamil Nadu right down in the south, and the, 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 on that map it also shows where SCAD, which I'll be mentioning in a moment, has ac activities. So one part of India now, how did I ever get to know this? Complete chance, Maxine Railton runs wonderful uh, holidays uh, I think are, um, to uh, where you can learn how to improve or de develop your sketching or photography uh, skills. And she bases a lot of that at an organization called SCAD, Social Change and Development in Turner Valley. So we, we went there with my partner, and we, were, we fell in love with it, all right, that's not a pompous word. We were so entranced by what they were doing that we've been back a number of times and got fascinated by uh, their potential. And they uh, employ several thousand people. They work with five, six hundred villages, two thousand five hundred women's groups. So in a sense, the problems are impossible. As I, I often say, how do you eat an elephant dance for a bite at a time? Well, I think in, in SCAD, they're, they're, they're managing to crack uh, some of the issues of dealing with the, the poor and marginalized. And you can see in this analysis of the cities in in Tamil Nadu, that you've got seven uh, medium-sized cities, and they're all in medium-sized cities in, uh, expanding about one, one and a half percent a year, but Chennai is growing by 40 percent. And it seemed to me that if one could get the medium-sized cities to grow in a more sustainable way, that, so that not everyone was moving into the mega cities, the world might be a slightly better place. That was the starting point. 
And so I'm hoping that we're going to focus on medium-sized cities. I took this picture when I went from Mumbai to uh, Delhi, and you can see the slums because they happen to be concentrating around the airport. And, but in Tirunavelli, you don't get slums like that, but you can see that in, in a 10-year period, uh, people are eating into the floodplain, and Sonia is going to be talking more about that problem. And I saw what seemed to me good land growing food where housing was going in a fairly random way. And it seemed to me that wasn't a good thing. Um, and uh, in Chennai, you can see on the outskirts of Chennai that the, uh, uh, the river delta is also being uh, eaten up. So it's no surprise when they have flooding. Of course, the river floods if you build into the floodplains and, and you don't um, maintain the watercourses. Uh, I also felt, and this, uh, I don't know whether this rings any bells at all with Indians, because it may be a purely Western thing, but I felt there was something sad in seeing a lot of heritage being neglected or being pulled down to put up you know, modern buildings. Uh, this happens to be a street in Palimcotta, uh, which is known as the Oxford of India. Um, no tourist has ever visited, no tourist has, has visited Tirunavelli. It's not modern. That's a silly thing to say, but it's not in the rough guide. It's not in the lonely plan. So the places with a lot of character and interests which are not on the beaten track. And it seemed to me a pity if, if one couldn't make more of what already exists, rather as Sinan was saying. And you see, if you go, not just the great uh, temples, which are a particular feature of Tamil Nadu, but roads which are chock-a-block with vehicles. Now, the uh, number of vehicles in Tamil Nadu has doubled in five years. It's the major center for making motor cars, or third of India's motor cars are made in Tamil Nadu. So it seems to me a particularly important place to consider whether the future is just everyone having a car, uh, whether it's a little car or a big car, or, or whether there are other alternatives. And uh, at the same time, it seemed to me there were a lot of assets which were under threat. That there was a perfectly good river at the moment. It, it flows uh, all year round. But I believe the water levels are going down 2% a year. So it won't always be the case if, if current trends uh, continue. Um, and there's a very good railway station, but it just runs, people go there for long distance travel. They don't use it for short distance journeys. There's uh, part of SCAD, a big college right in the middle. And then the typical streets, I, I took this, I showed you this picture because it shows bicycles. And there's a whole issue about whether there is any future to cycling or walking in India, or whether it is too hot or whether there isn't enough space and, and everyone's going to be driving around. Uh, that, that seems to be an issue. But at the moment, at least, what seemed to me very pleasant streets could be found next to uh, SCAD. And yet, the, this is the main temple complex, and the, you've actually got vehicles driving through it. It's a big issue. Can, the, can they get the cars out of the uh, historic centre, if you like? Uh, that means overcoming the uh, obstacle of the, uh, of the traders, which is why community engagement is such an issue, which is uh, something that Nidia is particularly interested in. And everyone who visits, I'm never sure whether so much in this. So in a very good book I brought, Transforming Our Cities, I mean, it would appear that people are equally concerned about garbage in India. Certainly young people seem concerned. But you see, if you're a perfectly nice new village, but the great piles of garbage are, are, are on the outskirts. Plastic, more from plastic bottles. So it seemed to me that if you've got a program of smart cities, 100 smart cities, it's very important not to repeat all the mistakes of Western cities or, did I say, Chinese cities. People need to live near their work. It's no good just kicking people out of the slums and moving them to the outskirts if the jobs are in the centre. And maybe, maybe, the garden cities might provide a model. And the only legitimacy that Herbert of Goss or Herbert trusts is that we won a prize for showing how to build garden cities that are visionary, viable, and popular. And this was the diagram that we showed for Oxford, with the, most of the growth taking place on the edge of Oxford, linked by high-quality public transport. It's directly derived from Ebenezer Howard's work in 1900, around 1900. And there are Indian cities that call themselves garden cities, like Bangalore, as, uh, Bam, yes, this Bangalore and Trivandrum. But you'll see that the garden <laughs> kind of evaporated. Um, and the, here's SCAD, and uh, it, it's itself in a sort of garden-type setting, lots of students, uh, male and female, and so on. And uh, I, I was really impressed by what they were doing. And by the sort of Gandhian philosophy, this great phrase, be the change that you wish to see in the world. And it, and they've already been innovative in things like wind power, but also in biodigestion, all the campus food waste. You wonder why there should be campus food waste, but anyway, is processed to produce biogas and also uh, manure. 
And there's this in, incredible important fact, which uh, I, I saw in a newspaper, that there were more toilet, more temples than... There's this issue about toilets, more mobile phones than toilets. And Gandhi has said the priority is to start providing toilets. In a world where the climate is changing, and therefore problems we've got at the moment are going to get probably worse in terms of unpredictable weather. So, the idea then came about, and here Brian Love has been a great help with connected cities, and he's done a whole case study to him about it. Is there's potential for growing the, the settlements on the railway lines, for railway lines, and uh, developing them in a more sustainable manner, uh, rather than just seeing sprawl into the food, uh, the areas producing food? The areas you see the condemnation. And I, I suspect there are other, this is not unique. To, I mean, the, the railways all over the places, the junctions. So I'm suggesting, and I'm seeing some nods there, so I'm <laughs> saying no if I get it wrong, that it may be there's something to the idea of developing around transport nodes, certainly for the longer term. And there you see the relationship between the, the little the settlements, each of which are about 30,000 population at the moment, and, and the water uh, system. And in order to try to... Um, uh, make an impact. They uh, they had already there'd been a, a system set up with bearing Maxine's name to ask uh, students to put here to to compete for awards, uh, in, in particularly in the first case of, uh, using creativity. And then I they asked me, can I provide an award? And so we had a second. So we had the Maxine and the Herbert Awards and. Um, uh, this is at the uh, awards ceremony. And um, uh, what was really exciting was how students uh, came up with, made presentations in English um, without reading off from slides, as one might have seen English students do. Um, and uh, this is a group we're dealing with water. You can see the ne they, their focus was on how to get education into schools to make people aware of the importance of conserving water. Uh, we also look, asked about house building. This is just a range of, of houses from the area. And you can see there are some quite splendid houses, splendid looking houses. And this is what the students came, uh, one of the models that they, they made. Um, and it, it's not unlike, I think, the, the sort of drawing that um, we've shown um, in, um, and, and is, we've circulated. Um, and that is how we, uh, Jas came up with this sort of drawing, um, which is perhaps a, 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 a prototype for how one might grow the city. I meant to say, when I showed this story, the, the head of engineering said, which house do you want? I'll give you the drawing spread tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I thought it might be good to do a little bit of research into what people wanted and, and so on. But he also, the same man, said it's vital. The, these guys, the people grow vegetables in their backyard, and indeed this is trying to show vegetable, and it's sort of oriented so to take advantage of the wind. And we've set up this website to try to share knowledge. I hope some of you have looked at it. If you have any reactions, I really welcome them because we have no idea uh, whether it's what people need, whether there are gaps. But the, the, the person responsible, Jonah Rudlin, is sitting in the back. There. So uh, we do welcome comments, and we'll be putting the presentations onto it. So what are the issues for urban design? Well, I'm just going to highlight four out of a whole list. Where should growth be focused? And, and that leads into densities and, and, and uh, forms of travel. How can sprawl be checked and, and affordable housing be built? And we're particularly interested in the notion that a whole range of people who can't afford to live in luxury apartments, um, who, who will be only one generation removed from living in a village, uh, and if we can't increase the, the value of what farmers produce, then the scope for really improving conditions is very limited, which is why we're trying to look at alternatives to concrete. Public health, what can be done to improve open spaces, uh, particularly uh, green spaces which are being eroded, and community engagement, who should take the lead, and what role can education play? Well, I, I thought I'd leave with a positive I think that's a positive image. <laughs> and, 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 I, I, I would emphasise that the, the, the feeling I have from going to the South at least, Maxine perhaps, is a very positive feeling. It's a feeling not of the poverty that you... I mean, yes, people are poor, people are not eating enough. But on the whole, I think the, the, there is a lot going for that area. So that's why we're focusing our efforts there. And I know there are many areas which are in a desperate state, but I, I don't feel we can contribute much to them. Not. So that's... Thank you. Thank you.